Hi, my name is Stuart Weems and welcome to the Investopoly podcast. My goal is to give you easy to understand evidence-based holistic insights to help you master the game of building wealth. And as most regular listeners would know, in my Wednesday episode, I talk about the theories, methodologies and principles associated with investing. The aim of these case study episodes is to share how it's worked out in a real life situation so you can get a sense of, you know, what are people investing in and after receiving our advice for many years, how does it all work out for them? Okay, so the basis of today's episode is really around clients that have employee shares. So then this is a growing trend where listed companies will provide an allocation either as a short-term or long-term incentive to employees through the allocation of shares and they tend to vest over say three years or something like that. And of course, as a result, that creates some tax consequences when they vest their tax as income. So that's a problem or at least it's a challenge around the tax liability. And then of course, what do I do with those shares? And if I sell them, you know, where do I put the proceeds? And this over the last uh, 12 years of working with this client since 2012 was one of the sort of key considerations that we had to deal with for him. And if you make some good decisions, of course, around allocation of that wealth, it can have some compounding impacts. So at the time we began working with him in 2012, as I said, about 12 years ago, he had around about 200,000 of shares in in Rio Tinto. It's obviously a listed mining company, about 390000 in super, and one investment property in Hawthorne East that actually didn't have any equity at the time because it was only just a recent purchase. So the property cost him 365000 and he owed about 377 against it. So they had negative equity only just not because it wasn't a terrible investment, but just because he hadn't owned it for very long. So at the time in 2012, with some cash and other shares and so forth, his net investment assets were about $800,000. Today, these net investment assets have grown to $2.8 million over the last 12 years. So $800,000 to two point eight. I think it's a pretty good result and certainly something I think he's pretty happy with. So what have we done over that time? What have we done over the last 12 years? So we initially purchased another investment grade apartment in what I think is one of the best streets in South Yarra in which is a suburb of Melbourne, for those that aren't familiar. And we spent $515,000 on that in 2013. But realistically, neither apartments have done very well. Really, arguably, if you have the wisdom of hindsight, 2013 wasn't probably the peak of the market, but might have been relatively close to it. And we've had a very flat cycle, really, for apartments over the last 13 or so years. So whilst they were fundamentally sound decisions, and I'm positive, very positive workout, fine, longer term, the last 12 years, they've made very little contribution to my client's overall financial position. So as I said, my client was lucky enough to get allocated a bunch of Rio Tinto shares. Because they vested every year, very difficult to go back and work out, you know, how much in quantum and so forth. But also the share price appreciated a lot. And really between 2012 and 2017, it was when he worked for Rio. And so the first five years of our relationship, he was receiving these shares. In 17, just when he stopped working, Rio Tinto shares were trading about $60. And at times over the last number of years, they've peaked around $130. And so our strategy, and as it always is, is to try and strategically divest of these employee shares and then reallocate that capital elsewhere. And for our client, it was really, we had some share market investments going on, although we've gradually moved them into super and or when we sold down, we'd make some non-concessional super contributions into his super because obviously we've got that cash now, let's put it in a tax effective environment to reinvest it. Since 2017, his income's been substantially lower. So he left Rio, started to do some consulting work, which has been good for the client to give him a bit of a better balance. But, you know, his capital contributions since 17 towards his asset base haven't been as substantial. Other than super contributions, of course, we were maximizing concessional contributions over that period of time. So really, if I sort of summarize, it was these two investment grade apartments that again, position to, I think, perform incredibly well over the next 10 years, but the past 10 years has been pretty terrible. We've gradually sold down Rio shares, although he's still got a relatively valuable parcel. And we've really put super to work in terms of making sure it's invested wisely. And so it's said he's gone from 800 to 2.8 million. So it's certainly the advices and processes has worked out. I think there's sort of four key learnings as I like to do. I like to reflect on the case study and think, well, what have we learned? And what could you learn as a listener? 
listener. The first one is that if you do have employee shares, you know, because your income is linked to that company and that industry, you don't necessarily want your financial position to also be linked to that income and that industry because one day that income or industry might not be doing so well. And so you really want to diversify. You know, it's fine to have your income relying on a particular company industry, but not your financial position. So our strategy is to always try and strategically divest of these employee shares. And we don't want to give them away. And if we think the stock is undervalued, maybe we will sell a smaller amount. But at times where we feel like the share price is fully valued, uh, those times we would sell, you know, a greater amount. But, you know, gradually we don't want it to be a substantial portion of your asset base. We do want to strategically divest of that and then put it to work in a, in a rules-based, evidence-based approach. The second thing, which is a common theme in these case study episodes, is it shows how important super performance is and diversification. There's nothing wrong with these two investment properties from a quality perspective. Just unfortunate timing in terms of returns over the last 12 years. But people, and particularly property investors, kind of discount super and think, oh yeah, that's okay, we'll get to that or worry about that when I'm closer to retirement. But it shows that if we pay a bit of attention to it and make sure it does perform, and in case that our other investments don't perform as expected, you know, it's a really important approach. Now, thankfully, he can keep those two investment properties forever if he likes. In fact, we're making some changes to his asset allocation at the moment, which will mean that he'll have very little debt against those investment properties. So the good thing is that he's in a great position where he can ride out the flat cycle that we're experiencing in Melbourne. Now, we'll probably sell those assets at the end of the next growth cycle or somewhere between it. So probably sell them, I would imagine, at some point over the next five to 10 years. But the good thing is he's got the patience and he's got the ability to wait it out. Those returns will eventually come. I'll just remind you the flat cycle in Perth, which ended mid last year, lasted 15 years. And probably for the last five of those 15 years, I've been saying, look, that Perth market will kick off at some point and it's eventually done that. So it will turn. It's just a question of when, not if. The other observation is we've been gradually moving more of his wealth into super. At the moment, he's got about 61% of his overall wealth in super. Over the next couple of years, we'd like to get that to about 80%. And the reason for that is that obviously super is very tax effective. You're not paying any income or capital gains tax on investment returns. You don't necessarily need to be at 100%, although there's not necessarily any downside to doing so either. But if he has around 20% of his net wealth outside of super, that's not such a big deal because you're not going to end up paying a lot of tax on that in any case. You know, as long as your taxable income is 30000 or less, you know, you're not really paying very much tax at all. But I guess that the other thing too is it doesn't have to, we don't have to achieve, you know, getting a lot inside super by the time clients get to 60. We can do that in their 60s for instance, it's not that big a deal. But having more, a greater focus on, okay, we've got this, these assets, where do we want them held and how can we move them in there? So anyway, I thought it was an interesting case study. It's worked out really well for him. He's got some great quality assets. And you know, if I do this case study again on this client, 10 years from now, I think we'll be looking back and going, well, he's in a super strong position and his properties have, have finally contributed to that. Okay. Until tomorrow for my regular podcast, take care and I'll speak to you then. Cheers.